Hello, this is Phalaenopsis the Moth Orchid. You probably recognise it because they are abundantly available in the shops nowadays and they're not that expensive. However, they do produce these absolutely stunning blooms and those blooms can last on the plant for four or five months. And indeed, these here are cut flowers. It's, they are Phalaenopsis, but they've been in that vase for eight weeks. They seem to last forever these blooms. Now sadly, because these plants are readily available and not very expensive, a lot of people have now decided that they're almost like a bunch of flowers and when they're finished you can throw them away, which I think is a great shame because it's quite easy and quite possible to get this flower, this plant, to flower again and again and again. And I'm going to talk about that in this video. And the plant can live for decades. So I'm, I would try and encourage people to have a slightly different approach to this plant. In other words, let's not see it as disposable. Let's rotate it. Let's have several of them and uh, keep the ones that are in bloom on display, but have some uh, in reserve so that when they die down, we can bring these back out again. Another thing we can do is grow to love these beautiful leaves. Uh, gorgeous leaves on this plant. They're almost like a succulent. And in this video, I'm going to talk to you about um, how I care for this plant and some of the mistakes that can be made in caring for it. Now, I think it's logic and it's more logic than a lot of other plants really uh, comes into play when you think about this plant. Now, let's talk about this plant in its native environment because that informs how you care for it. This plant does not grow like that in the wild. It does not have an upright habit like that. It actually grows up in the trees and it grows on trees and it puts roots into the bark of trees and it also has roots which hang out into the air. So in the wild, it would be more horizontal like that. And these flower blooms would actually drop down. They'd cascade like a waterfall. That's only upright because it's being held upright artificially by this little cane here. The same is true on that plant to my left. So if you think about where it lives and how it lives and the environment it lives in, that informs how you care for it. So let's talk about how to care about this and some of the mistakes. Uh, this is quite easy to make and you've been forgiven for making. Let's have a look at the pot. Now invariably these come in these plastic pots. They, these are both in um, see-through plastic pots. And the reason they're in see-through plastic pots is because the roots themselves actually photosynthesize. And the way you can tell you've got healthy, well-nourished roots is they're actually green. And that means that they're producing um, chloroform or chlorophyll. They're actually photosynthesizing. So they come in this medium, which is like a, a wood bark. And again, think about the native environment. They live up in the air. That wood bark enables lots of air and oxygen to circulate around the roots of the plant. And in addition to that, there's a lot more drainage holes in the bottom of this pot than you would normally get in a plant pot. What does that mean? Well, it's en essentially it means that these roots don't like to be waterlogged. They like to have sufficient water, but not too much water. And that's why it's in wood bark and there's lots of drainage holes and we allow light to it so that the roots can photosynthesize. Now, one of the mistakes people make is when they repot them, they repot them into standard potting compost. When really, they should be buying this stuff and you can buy this off Amazon. I'll put the link to this one in the description box below this video. It's orchid bark. It's quite low in nutrients because they're not really taking a lot of nutrition from the soil. So that's that, it's one of the mistakes that people make. The benefit of that is it really does allow the water to drain through and it means that the roots are never sitting in water. And that's another mistake people make at home is they overwater it and they sit it in a pot and it sits in water all day and the roots simply rot. So when you water this, if and when you water it, you must periodically come back and throw the water away. You don't want it to have wet roots all the time. How do you know when it needs watering? Well, have a look at the roots. If they're green like that, it doesn't need washing yet. It will go a silvery white color 
when it needs washing. On the inside of that pot, I can clearly see condensation. If there's condensation on the inside of that pot, it doesn't need watering. You can feel the bark and if it's damp, it doesn't need watering. And also the leaves will start to wilt. So there's four indications that it needs watering. And if you've not got those indications, just don't water it because there's a tendency to overwater. And if you do, you'll rot the roots. Now, I've just said that if the leaves start to wilt, it might need washing. There's another reason why the leaves can wilt, and that is overwatering. Because by overwatering, you rot the roots, it kills the plant, the leaves will wilt. So you've got to find that balance. I'll repeat myself. Nice green roots, signs of photosynthesis, moisture on the inside, feel it and look for wilting leaves. And until you've got those, don't bother washing it. Remember, it likes to sit up in the air and it will gather humidity uh, from the air. So, in terms of light, again, think about the forest canopy. It's light up there, but it's never direct sunlight. This plant does not like direct sunlight. So in the home, put it in a lovely light spot, but not in direct sunlight. It can go in direct sunlight, in the early morning when it's not at its strongest, but you must remember to move it. The leaves will suffer if it's in direct sunlight. Let's again, let's talk about the leaves, lovely green leaves. Now, remember this, it photosynthesizes on the top. So it uses the top to convert light into energy and it breathes through the bottom. Now in the forest canopy, hanging on a tree or growing on a tree, the rainwater would rinse the top of the leaves but the underneath of the leaves will not rinse. In the home, it gathers dust. So it's a really good idea because that dust can inhibit photosynthesis to wipe the top of the leaves. Wipe them with a damp cloth or a damp tissue or one of those makeup removers. Don't wipe the underneath because by wiping the underneath, you can block up the pores. In terms of the water that you use to both water it and clean it, well, it doesn't like hard water. In the UK, we're quite lucky because we do have soft and hard water, but we don't really have great extremes. We don't have very, very hard water and very, very soft water. This likes soft water. If you've got really hard water, then use filtered water to clean it and water it. Or gather some rainwater to clean it and water it. Now, I've mentioned watering, and I've told you when it needs watering. I've not told you how. I water these. So there's two different approaches to watering. You might buy this and it might be in this bark medium that I've already spoken about. Alternatively, it might come in moss. Some of these are sold in moss. Both of those are perfectly acceptable. They both allow air around the roots and they both allow some light around the roots. But moss is more absorbent and more water retentive than the bark. So that kind of informs how you water them. With the ones in bark, you can plunge it in water and leave it there for five minutes and then remove it and allow all the excess to drain away. And then half an hour or an hour later, go back and check and just make sure that you've removed it all. Again, about we're talking about root rot there. With the moss, with the ones that are grown in moss, you can water them from the top, but don't overwater them. And again, don't let it sit in water. Water them less if they're in moss because the moss will retain some of that moisture. Now, if you're watering these from the top, and again, you can do, remember that in the wild, if they're growing like that, any excess water will drip out, will leak out of the plant. But if you're watering from the top like this, you can get water sitting in the crown and that's a bad thing because it can cause the crown and the stem to rot. So if that happens, just take a little piece of kitchen roll, roll it up in a twist and just dip it in there to remove the water. Because in the wild, the water would drip away or there'd be breezes through and it would evaporate. And that doesn't happen very readily in the home. So then again, remove any excess water from the top. Now, I was going to talk to you about these beautiful flowers and the fact that people kind of have them in the house for several months and then when the flowers die, they throw them away. 
Well, I can kind of understand it, but I do think that these leaves are a beautiful shape and a beautiful colour and a lovely backdrop in any room, even without the blooms. But if you really want blooms, then you can get this to flower again and again and again. And there's a couple of ways of doing that. It will never flower where it's already flowered. So anywhere there that's had a flower on it, it will never flower again. But further down the stem, there are some buds that have not had flowers on them. So you can prune it down to just above a bud and that might stimulate it to produce a new flowering stem. And that's one way of doing it. But that flowering stem might be slightly less uh, than this and never as vigorous as that. So another way of doing this is to prune it right the way back to the base. And that's what's happened with this one. There was a flowering spike there and it was pruned all the way back and it produced another. So prune it right the way back. Now, think about these flowers. They take a lot of energy to produce. Imagine the work and the energy that's gone into producing that. It's, it's a work of art. It's one of the wonders of the world, that plant. It takes a lot of energy. So when you cut the flowers off and you put it into reserve and you're waiting for a new bloom to arrive, that's when you start feeding it. And you can expose it to slightly more light and give it slightly more food to help to stimulate this new growth, this new flower. So don't throw it away, keep it, encourage it to produce more flowers and you can have that for a couple of decades. And uh, like I've already said, maybe have two or three plants and rotate them so that you've got some in reserve and some on display. Or alternatively, fall in love with the leaves like I've done. So there you go. I hope you've enjoyed that and found it informative. They're actually quite an easy plant to look after. And I think what a lot of people tend to do is overfeed them and overwater them and give them too much light. Now, one last thing that I would like to mention is temperature. They will like any temperature that we like. So they'll be quite happy in a cool room and they'll be quite happy in a warm room. But you don't want to put them over a heat source like a radiator or a fan heater. So put them somewhere where they're not right close to a direct heat source. And that kind of finishes my kind of beginner's guide or care tips for the Phalaenopsis and Moth Orchid. If you've got anything to add, please feel free to do so in the description box below and anyone else that's watching this video, you can read those comments. And then we're using the YouTube hive mind, aren't we? Excellent. Right, thanks for watching and I will see you soon for some more Phalaenopsis Moth Orchid adventures. Bye for now.